am so glad that May is here. I'm really excited for things to get growing outside. I'm excited for all the fun things that I'm planning for the kids to do. It's going to be a really great month. We have a lot of new activities and things to switch our environment up to keep things fun and interesting and to keep the kids busy. So to start off with, I have some real images for the wall. Makes things look fresh and new and gives us something to discuss and learn about. The books that we will be reading are Planting a Rainbow, Up to My Knees, The National Geographic's In My Garden, and Eric Carle's The Tiny Seed. These are going to be a lot of fun to be reading with the kids and also have in our library for them to look at when they want. And then also for Play-Doh, I have some of these flower cookie cutters. I thought it'd be fun to have a parts of the flower Play-Doh mat for them to kind of work on this terminology while they're playing with the Play-Doh and maybe they will make some of these parts and make their own flowers. And in my sensory bin, I have made up all of these little letter flowers and I've cut them out and taped them onto a stick and I thought it'd be fun to just add a bunch of black beans in the sensory bin with some scoops and some cups. They can plant these little letter flowers inside of the cups and make letter bouquets. And also in the sensory bin I'm going to put some of these little snails and slugs down into the beans. And then at the dollar store I found these little gnomes. I thought it'd be fun to hide in the sensory bin for them to play with and have fun with as well. So next for the writing center, I have a lot of these printouts. These ones that came in the garden packet from teaching two and three year olds. Those are really great. Along with the spring dot packet, I still have the flower and the snail. And then I've also made some of these half sheet coloring pages. Those seem to work out really well. Also this little book that I've made in my garden it has a page for just some things that you might find in a garden. It's really great to get some literacy see some fine motor with the coloring as well as some vocabulary there. In our dramatic play we're going to be doing a garden nursery. I've made a couple little signs there, some real images for them to look at and reference. And I've also got this little Grow It Deluxe Garden set from the learning resources. I think this will go really well in the dramatic play and the kids will have a lot of fun with that. And for circle time or morning discussion I have a couple question cards here. What is a garden and how do we care for plants? And a lot of discussions you can have with these. We can just pull these out every day at Circle and have a little discussion. And then also I have these flower props that are a freebie from teaching two and three year olds. They love having these at the end of Circle time when they're just ready to get up and dance and we turn the music on. There's a really cute song by the Kaboomers called Five Little Flowers. So I will put a link for that. It's just super cute and it'll be really fun with these flower props. I think the kids will really enjoy that. So a few activities that we can have. Um, I have a couple games here. I have some of these garden bug manipulatives and I think these will be fun to play some math games with. We can roll the dice and they can count them out. For a movement game, I have just created some big flowers here. I'm going to tape these to the floor in a number line, just going straight down in a row and there's 10 of them. It's a very simple game. All they do is roll dice. They'll count out how many flowers they get and then they will move down the number line and stand on the flower as they go down. So I'll just keep these flowers taped to the floor and once the kids are familiar with this game they can actually just play this by themselves anytime they like as a free choice activity. For our tabletop or tray activities I have made a couple of these sequence puzzles. This one is just a very simple one. It only has four parts to it and I'll just simply line these up one on top of the other one. And then this one is a sorting activity. So one is a vegetable garden, one is a flower garden, and they'll just sort out what is a vegetable, what is a flower. This is a little sequence activity. They will look at these cards and decide what has come first, second, third and fourth and they will simply lay that on top of the other card. I also have made some more of these simple um, two-part puzzles. These ones all go with the garden theme and have a lot of objects on them, things that you might see pretty commonly in a garden. These are flower matching cards so you could play a memory game with these, turning them all over face down and take 
have the children take turns finding the matches and remembering where the other cards were. You could also just lay them all face up, let the children draw one card at a time and find the match. For this activity we are going to be planting some sunflower seeds. I have these little paper cups here. I got these at Dollar General and I think I'm just going to have them paint these with some tempera paint just to kind of make those customized. I have some mammoth sunflower seeds here that we'll plant and then also some of these little sticks that we can write their name on so we know whose is who. So these grow really fast. Within the two weeks we should be able to see these flowers popping out. For this group activity we will be using this Van Gogh sunflowers painting as a inspiration. This is just going to be a fine motor art activity really. So they're going to be doing little snips all the way around to make roughly sunflower petals all the way around the outside much like the painting and then when that's done they can put a lot of glue in the middle here and put on some of these small pom poms. You could even use real sunflower seeds if you wanted for that and if you wanted to make this really easy and mess free you could just let them layer on a whole bunch of these little circle stickers in the center. These are also great for fine motor and they really enjoy putting these stickers on to things so I think that will be a really nice one and really great for some fine motor. I also thought it'd be fun to make some garden stones. I've never made these before so I went ahead and ordered a kit. It came with this little tray and some of the plaster. There's enough to make four stones in each box. This will probably have to be done as a one-on-one -on -one activity because I don't have that many trays. What I might do is put some saran wrap over the top while it's still soft and let the children press their hand in there and make a little handprint. Once those are dry, the children can paint them. I think this will be a nice fun activity, something different that we have not done before. For this one, we are going to be making some spin art flower props. So this is a little flower template that I have. What we'll do is we will put that into our salad spinner and I'll let the children drop some bright colored paint on there. Let those spin around and see what kind of cool designs they get. Once those are dry, they can put some dot stickers or glue some kind of embellishment in the center for the seeds and then and when it's all done, we will go ahead and put a jumbo popsicle stick onto the back and maybe even some little leaves or some greenage. I think this will be really nice and they love having these props on the stick. For this activity, I have these brown wooden beads. I think we're going to make some beaded earthworms and just go ahead and bead them onto a piece of Chanel stem. If you had some brown Chanel stem, that'd probably be perfect. Any color really will do, any color bead will do, but just basically making some nice little earthworms out of the beads another great fine motor activity and beading is always a favorite for everyone. So this is a Monet painting of a garden with a child in the center of it. So we're going to do some process art that's inspired by this Monet garden. And to start with that, we're just going to roll some bubble wrap. This bubble wrap has just been wrapped around a toilet paper roll and they'll roll that into the paint and then roll it onto the big sheet of paper. And then the next day when that's dry, we'll take some of these little paper cups and they can glue those on for the flowers and then I have some of these little sticks those can be the stem and then they can also collage on some green tissue paper for the leaves and I even have some flower stickers they can add and it might even be cute to take a picture of the child and cut that out and let the children glue their own little picture of themselves in the middle of this garden. So I think these will be cute. Um, I love this Monet painting so it's kind of fun to have that out for us to enjoy. For Mother's Day we have a couple projects here that we're going to be doing. This one is a vase and this vase is just from the dollar store. I chose a thicker vase because I thought it would be less likely to break if the children were to drop it. And what I'll have the children do is just paint that whole thing in some glue and then cover Cover it all up with some tissue paper and they make a beautiful colorful collaged vase for their mothers and then I will go over that with some high gloss Mod Podge when they're done and just give it a nice finish and then I have some of this white ribbon from the dollar store as well and I will tie that around the top and make a cute little bow and then the day that they go home before Mother's Day probably that Friday I'm gonna get some fresh flowers and the children will do a little flower arranging and make a nice vase full of flowers to take home to their mother so or grandmother or whoever it may be that they'll be celebrating Mother's Day with. I can't help myself when I go to the dollar store if I see things that I just 
can't resist and one of those is their wooden cutouts and frames and things. They had these big wooden flowers. They're so cute and they were only a dollar twenty or whatever that the dollar store is now. But I thought these might be cute to put the children's photo in the middle here after they've painted that with some tempera paint or something like that. And then I can also once again cover that with Mod Podge. So I have some of these sparkly foam stickers. When we're all done, they can finish it up and embellish it with some sparkly stickers. One more thing, if we get to this, we will have a second project to do for Mother's Day. So I hope this helps and I hope you enjoyed planning with me for the garden theme. Stay tuned because very soon I will be posting my next video. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out.